This is a jet-driven car called the Green Monster. It holds the world's land speed record. It was driven on that record-breaking run by one of these three men. What is your name, please? My name is Art Arfon. My name is Art Arfon. My name is Art Arfon. Only one of these men is the real Art Arfon. The other two are imposters and will try to fool this panel. Tom Poston, Peggy Cass, singing star Bobby Rydell, and Kitty Carlisle. On to tell the truth with your host, Bud Collier. And welcome once again to To Tell the Truth. And a good evening to you, panel. Good evening, Brian. Always a joy to be with you. We're brought to you tonight by Winston Filter Cigarettes. Bobby, I know you just returned from a very exciting singing tour in Japan. That's right, Bud. Tell us something uh, about it. I mean, what was the Japanese reaction to American popular music? Well, their music in Japan is... Uh, Oh, just about the same as here in America. Really? And the kids enjoy the same type of music as the teenage uh, kids do here. And as far as jazz music, jazz music is very, very big in Japan, as is big band music. And uh, we work with three excellent orchestras who read excellent. We put the music in front of them and with no trouble read the arrangements right off. And we had a great time for three weeks. Now, music like art, I guess, is a universal language no matter where you go. That's right. Uh, let's see now. You've just signed a new contract with uh, Capitol Records? That's right. I just signed with Capitol Records. Release? It's, uh, it's been about a month now, and the release What's has the been out a couple of days or so. It's called I Just Can't Say Goodbye. Well, don't. Stick around <laughs> and play the game. Why not? <laughs> we'll play the game first. Open up that envelope, if you will, panel, and follow along with me. I, Art Arfons, hold the current world's land speed record. I established the new record in a car which my partner and I built by hand out of an Air Force surplus jet engine and assorted parts from an old Packard, a Lincoln Continental, and a Dodge truck. This car, named the Green Monster, using only part of its 17,000 horsepower, attained an average speed of over 536 miles per hour. Signed, Art Arfons. <laughs> These three gentlemen all claim to be Art Arfons, land speed record holder. And we we'll start this questioning, if we may, with Tom Poston. Tom? Oh, thank you, bud. Uh, I'll ask uh, number one, who looks like he might be Mr. Arfons, <laughs> if you have any plans for using the rest of your horsepower. Uh, right now, I don't believe we will. That's number two. Uh, uh, what is the uh, arrangements for timing a, a speed run on land? Well, it's timed by USAC. No, I mean, you don't just get one timing, do you? No, it's an average of two runs, two-mile uh, runs. Thank you. Number three, why do they differ so, so much? The, different, the two runs always uh, are so different in terms of speed. There can be different factors, such as wind, the course, the kind of condition it's in. Thank you. Peggy Cash. Well, I saw it, but I didn't believe it. <laughs> Number three, what kind of tires did you use? I used Firestone nylon tires, especially developed for this run. Uh, number two, well, they, they, don't, they don't use those tires on any other car but yours? No. I see. Uh, number uh, one, what's the average horsepower on cars? I mean, I thought that they were like V8. I don't know. What's 70,000 yours has? I'm sure I'll never need that. <laughs> what, what's the average one like in an ordinary car you buy from the dealer? Oh, from 300 to 400 horsepower. Well, you foot crazy. That's a lot of horsepower. <laughs> now, number two, how much was the surplus jet? $5,000. Number three, how much did it cost you? Bobby Rydell. <laughs> uh, number one, how did you uh, come to find the name of Green Monster for your car? Uh, I've had several cars. It was on all of them. Number two, do you agree with that? Well, it, it is green, and it was dubbed that by uh, the newspapers. I see. Number three, uh, what kind of parts were taken uh, from the jet plane, taken from the jet plane? I mean, the engine was the only part taken from a plane. Only the engine. And number two, do you agree with that? Yes. 
the track that we saw earlier on the uh, on the monitor, number one, excuse me, uh, what is that made out of, the track? Uh, that's a salt desert. And uh, number two, that is just on a straightaway. The car doesn't make any turns at all, does it? Not during the run, no. Uh-huh. Kitty Carlisle. Number three, where was this run? Bonneville. Where's that? Utah. Uh, number two, which parts did you use out of which? What did you use from the Lincoln Continental? The front end. The front, the front end. end. And what was the back end, number one? <laughs> Number one? Number one. What was the Packard? Pardon me. It was a Dodge Echo. And what was the Packard? An old Packard, it says. Number three. The steering gear, wheel and gear. Why did you have to have an old Packard for the steering gear? It was the handiest at the time. <laughs> you have an old Packard. Uh, what? If you have to have an old Packard, yes. Number one, when you... That's oh, all the time we have. Now it's time for you to mark your ballot. So will you kindly do so at once, panel? Yeah, without change and, of course, change. without consultation. Oh. Without yes. consultation, <laughs> mark your ballot. And vote for number one, number two, or number three. Our team of challengers will, of course, receive the usual $250 for every incorrect vote. Are all ballots marked? All right, Tom, for whom did you vote? I voted for number three. Uh, I think because uh, of the nature of this particular machine, it probably was named especially. I, that, that's why I didn't vote for number one, because he said that all of his were named the Green Monster. But uh, he looks like a guy that would be out there on the salt flats racing around in a surplus parts. Thank you, Jack. You know, I voted for number two, and the reason was he said, he talked about his car, which he was very serious about, the newspapers named it that, as though he would have called it Darling or something. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why I voted for number two. Darling Green Monster. Uh, Bobby right out. But I voted for uh, number three because he mentioned the Bible Salt Flats, which uh, comes to mind of the, that's where I think they hold all the, uh, all of the speed car races, so I placed my vote for number three. Kitty. I voted for number two. <laughs> I voted for number two because my reason is personal, and I hope number two will forgive me, but we're bound to tell the truth on this show, and number two seems to have less hair than the others, and I think if you go at that speed, you might lose them. <laughs> well, it's evenly whacked up then between number two and number three. Two for each. Let's find out at once. Which one of these gentlemen is, in truth, the land speed record holder? Will the real Art Arfons please stand up? I don't believe it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Oh, boy. Incidentally, we'd like to thank the Firestone Tire and Rubber Company for making both Art Arfon's speed record and his appearance on our show this evening possible. Uh, how did you feel when you were going that fast? Oh, it's a real rag. I it is. Wow. Well, thank heaven you made it and made it successfully. Now, leave it alone. Don't try to top it. <laughs> okay. Fine. Number two, what is your real name and what do you really do and how did you lose your hair? No, I mean, uh, <laughs> what do you really do? My name is Joe Manganello and I'm with Bankers Trust Company. <laughs> <laughs> and number three, what is your real name and what do you do, sir? I'm George Lyle. I'm assistant manager of the RCA Pavilion here at the New York World's Fair. <laughs> <laughs> well, in checking the score, you did it. You really fooled the panel all the way, and that means there were four incorrect votes at $250 each for a total of $1,000, gentlemen, for you to divide. And may it bring you great joy. Thank you for being with us. Good night, and God bless you. <laughs> take time off for a brief film. Back in a minute. Meet our next team of challengers. What is your name, please? My name is Christine Snell. My name is Christine Snell. My name is Christine Snell. Okay, panel, get your eyes down on the, on, the, on the desk in front of you now, and let's follow along with this next uh, story. Oh, yeah. 
I, Christine Snell, work at a large oceanarium called Sea World. While part of my work involves the underwater capture of specimens for the tanks, my specialty is training the dolphins to perform for the visitors. I work right in the water with the animals and have taught them to swim through hoops, tow swimmers about, and sink a rowboat by pulling a plug from the bottom. Signed, Christine Snell. <laughs> Three young ladies all claim to be Christine Snell, dolphin trainer. We'll start this cross-examination, if we may, with Kitty Carlisle. Kitty. Thank you. If working underwater makes you that pretty, I think we should all take to it. <laughs> yeah. Number one, uh, in order to train dolphins, is it like other animals? Do you use kindness? Yes. Are you speaking? Yes. Number one? Uh, yes, you do, definitely. And number two, what do you reward them with when they do their tricks? Well... Technically, it's called reinforcement. Actually, it's, it's fish. Usually, we use smell. Ah, number smell? three, smell. Um, Who? <laughs> <laughs> uh, number three, can you understand them when they speak to you? Uh, we feel occasionally that I, I do feel that I can understand a few of the things that they do. What do they say? Hello, how are you? <laughs> Hi, Kitty. What are you doing down here? <laughs> Tom. Thank you. No, uh, number three, uh, how do you get him to pull that plug out of the bottom of the boat? Well, actually, we worked up from um, very simple tricks where they would just pull on a rope and then occasion and then work up to pulling a plug. How does the plug? Uh, what kind of purchase do they have to pull on? Is it just it's a plug? It's a rope, a rope attached plug. And they have a rope attached to it. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Number one is the. Is this thing scented in any way, or they know what to pull on ropes no. and so forth? No, they just, uh, they're taught, and they respond very quickly, and they've Thank learned you. it fast. Thank you. Number two, how big a brain does a porpoise have? I read recently that uh, scientists have discovered something about porpoises. Well, a porpoise has a very large brain, and he's considered the most intelligent animal next to human beings. Peggy Cat. Sometimes <laughs> more. <laughs> Num uh, number three, how many kinds of dolphins are there? I don't know exactly the, uh, the number of species, quite a few. Thank you. Thank you. Number two, do dolphins cry? Hmm. Well, sometimes they're sad. You can tell they're sad, but they really don't cry, sob. Uh, number one, how do you catch a dolphin? We use, uh, when we go out in the coast, we use nets and stretchers. Thank you. Number three, there's a television series on with a dolphin. What's the name of that? Flipper. Thank you. Uh, number two, does the dolphin know you when you go down there in your bathing suit? Oh, yes, he knows me. Oh, did, yes. Number one, does he swim over and kind of nuzzle you? <laughs> I want a dolphin. <laughs> Bobby, right now. Uh, number one, uh, where is the uh, oceanarium, uh, the uh, Sea World, located? Mission Bay in San Diego. Do you agree um, with this, number three? Yes, sir. Uh huh. Uh, what, uh, number two, what is the uh, aqualung made out of? What kind of material? Well, it's made out of iron. Uh-huh. Do you agree with that, number three? Yes, it is. Uh, how much pressure is contained in a tank, excuse me, number one? Depends on the size tank you're going to use. Uh, number two, do you always work underwater with the dolphins? I do, personally, but there are a number of shows at SeaWorld, you know, where the dolphins are above water. That's it. Time for you now to turn off your air tanks and go to work on the ballots. Mark them, if you will, please, panel. Mark them at once, without change, and, of course, no consultation. Just vote for number one, number two, or number three. All ballots are almost marked. See, we have a southpaw there, too. I didn't realize that before. Tom, for whom did you vote? I voted for number one. Uh... I've got a little dolphin blood in me, and I, I, she could get me to do almost anything. <laughs> Peggy Cat. Well, I think they all look swell as though, you know, they're the dolphin's true friend. But number two looks like a real outdoor girl. Of course, I, she should look like an underwater girl, but I mean, <laughs> I voted for her. Bobby Rydell, what is your choice? I voted for number one, but because of, uh, well, first of all, because of Peggy's reason and uh, because of the answers that she gave me on the aqua lung and the pressure contained in the tank, so my vote's for number one. And Kitty. <laughs> <laughs> you found it very good. <laughs> I voted for number three because although they all look very kind, and I think it takes a great deal of kindness to train animals, I voted for number three. 
Well, that's good that I guess, but as far as it can be split with four people voting for three contestants, one, two for number one, one for number two, one for number three. Let's find out now which one of these lovely young ladies, in truth, is the trainer of dolphins. Will the real Christine Snell please stand up? How <laughs> Kitty, I didn't imagine you would guess that one right because you're shedding so many feathers around here. I thought underwater was out of your can at the moment. Number one, what is your real name and what do you really do? My name is Marlene Laird and I'm a helicopter stewardess for New York Airways. And number two, what is your real name and what do you do? My name is Donna Duckwall and I work at WNEW TV. I'm personal secretary to Soupy Sales. <laughs> Well, in checking the score, ladies, I'm sure you've already checked it and probably spent your share of it because there were three incorrect at $250 each. That's a total of $750 coming your way. And we thank you very much for being with us tonight and hope you had as good a time as you gave to us. Good night and God bless you. Now a word about the protection of your floor. Panel, let's meet our third team of challengers. What is your name, please? My name is George McClellan. My name is George McClellan. My name is George McClellan. And will you follow along with your copies of this story, panel? I, George McClellan, enlisted in the Royal Canadian Mounted Police many years ago as a third-class constable. Although in those days we traveled by horseback, today we rely heavily upon the automobile and the airplane. We also are called upon to use the more glamorous canoe and dog sled. Since its founding in 1873, the duties of our organization have included Arctic patrol, enforcement of custom and immigration laws, as well as criminal investigation. Our authority extends throughout the three and a half million square miles of Canadian territory. I am at present the commissioner in command of the entire organization. Signed, George McClellan. <laughs> These three gentlemen panel all claim to be George McClellan, Commissioner of the entire Royal Canadian Mounted Police. We'll start with uh, Peggy Cass. Peggy? Thank you, bud. Um, number one, what Hollywood actor typifies to you the Royal Canadian Mounted Police? <laughs> Nelson Eddy, of course. <laughs> to me, too. <laughs> uh, number three, where is Dawson City? In the Yukon. Number two, please name the Maritime Provinces. Number three, would you name the Maritime Provinces? Newfoundland, Nova Scotia, New Brunswick, and Prince Edward Island. Number one, what is Screech? Screech? Screech. Well, uh, there is a particular uh, bird, a bird of prey in the Yukon uh, we call Screech. Thank you. Time. Number... Bobby Rydell. Uh, number two, the, you, you said there were three classes of constables. Uh, uh, excuse me, there's a, you are a third class constable. How many classes are there? Three classes of constables. There are three classes? Yes. Oh. Uh, do you agree with that, number one? Yes. Okay. Uh, what type, uh, excuse me, number three, what type airplane do you use? We have several types. <laughs> yes. Uh, well, uh, uh, the, uh, excuse me, number two, uh, what is the dog called who, uh, uh, what, what type dog, what breed of dog pulls the sled? Siberian Husky. Do you agree with that, number one? Yes, more recently. Uh, how, uh, number two, how did the word mush come to be? Hollywood. Hollywood? <laughs> Kitty Carlisle. You mean Hollywood invented the word mush? As they did other things, yes. You don't use it? No. Oh, my. Number three, why did they always wear red uniforms? We don't always wear red uniforms. Oh, those dress uniforms? Dress uniforms. Who invented that? The first commissioner of the force. And number one, who was the lieutenant governor of, uh, the governor general of Canada? Uh, Mr. Mr. Rainier. Hmm? George Barnier. 
Uh, and number two, does, does Raymond Massey's brother mean anything to you in terms of Canada? Indeed, yes. What's his name? Uh, Vincent Massey. Thank you. Number three, uh, why do you always have black horses? We didn't always have black horses. But we... <laughs> We've been breeding to black horses in latter years. But mostly black horses now. Tom Poston. Nobody bought them. They did. Oh. Oh, thank you. Uh, uh, number three, what does the expression north of steel mean? Beyond the end of the railway line. Uh, thank you. Number three, how come number two didn't know the maritime provinces? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Let me ask, uh, number one, if, if Newfoundland was always part of the Dominion of Canada. No, she joined in 50. In 1950? Yes. Number two, what are the uh, natives of Newfoundland called uh, uh, colloquially? Newfoundlanders. Yes, but do you know number three, a colloquial expression for That's all the time we have. It's time for you now to mark your ballot. So colloquial or not, simply mark them. Mark them at once, without consultation, and don't change once you have marked. Vote for number one, number two, or number three. Everybody completed their marking. All right, Tom, for whom did you vote this time? I voted for number three, uh, even though he doesn't deserve it. He should have told number two those maritime problems. <laughs> Peggy, what is your choice? Well, I put it for number three because of maritime provinces, and also, screech is a kind of whiskey that they drink in Newfoundland, and it, they get in so much trouble over screech that I'm sure the commissioner would know what that was. Oh. <laughs> Bobby Rydell. Uh, but I voted for a number three because he looks to be the outdoor type, the outdoorsy uh, kind of a guy, and because he knew about the maritime province and so on. Vote for number three. And Kitty. I voted for number three for an emotional reason. Oh. He looks like the guy that always gets his man. <laughs> <laughs> Unanimous for number three. Let's see how that sits with the truth itself, shall we, as we find out now which one of these gentlemen, in truth, is the commissioner of the entire Royal Canadian Mounted Police. Will the real George McClellan please stand up? combination of such simple things as one word screech and the maritime provinces are probably the things that uh, did more tripping than anything else. Incidentally, Commissioner, I understand that uh, Canada is already very excited, looking forward to the centennial uh, exposition in Montreal, I believe it is, isn't it? This is right. In 1967, it's the 100th anniversary of the Confederation of Canada, and the Mounted Police ride will be one of the feature attractions. Well imagined. I also suspect the Mounted Police will have a lot of responsibility with handling crowds like that. This is true. Will it be as big in, in size as the, uh, the New York World's Fair, for example? Uh, I don't know. But it, it is big. It's the biggest exposition ever held in town. Keep you mighty busy. Well, I'm certainly going to try to get up and see it. If I'm still around in 1967, I invite you all to go with me. It's my guest. Thank you. <laughs> all right. That's a date. Number one, what is your real name and what do you really do? My name is Ralph Sanderson, and I'm with the Journal of Commerce. <laughs> Thank you, sir. And number two, what is your real name and what do you do? I'm Peter Ossendorf, Regional Sales Manager for Lufthansa German Airlines. Well, when we check the score, we find it's just a reversal of what the first round was tonight. In other words, there were four correct, no incorrect. In that case, of course, it still is $150 that comes your way. And our sincere thanks, gentlemen. I hope you had enough fun to more than make up for any difference. Good night, and God bless you. Okay, panel, take a minute while we take a look at this brief film. A little bit like Bobby's new uh, album. I just can't say goodbye. <laughs> oh, give me such a good time, Bobby. You played the game very well. I hope you'll come back. Thank you very, very much. But I'd like to be back. Real Thank good you. fun. After you found the little shelf there to put, you <laughs> <laughs> put a special marker on that. Uh, there is something that you can do to help build a better world. Help people help themselves through the Peace Corps. And if you'd like more information about the Peace Corps, write Peace Corps, Washington 25, D.C. Good night to you, panel. Good night. Good night. Good night from Winston. And don't forget to join us at the same time next week. Of course, I'll see you tomorrow afternoon on the daytime show. And in the meantime, don't you forget to tell the truth. Bye. <laughs>
Now, guess the secrets with Steve Allen and his special guests, Robert Goulet and the Shangri-Las on I've Got a Secret, next on most of these stations. Then enjoy your other Monday night favorites, Andy Griffith, The Lucy Show, many happy returns. <laughs> has been brought to you tonight by Winston Filter Cigarettes. Winston tastes good like a cigarette should. This is Johnny Olson speaking for To Tell the Truth, the program was recorded.